Welcome to my lab here in uh, Redwood City, California. My name is Peter Holper. I'm a senior application scientist here at SciEx. Um, I've you know, worked for, for many years in analytical development within the biopharma industry within the CMNC space. One of the more commonly requested assays from groups that I supported within CMNC, whether that was people from process development, formulations groups who you know, loved to inundate you with samples, was charge heterogeneity analysis. Now we know that charge variants need to be monitored throughout our manufacturing process and on stability, not just because regulatory tells us to, but we really know that because uh, these proteins are subjected to certain conditions where their amino acid sequence is gonna be altered. Now these PTMs that, that we're trying to monitor and control can oftentimes be detected by changes in a protein's isoelectric point. And because of this, most analytical chemists, such as myself, and probably you uh, watching here now, uh, continue to use CIF in uh, our charge heterogeneity control strategy. And that's what we're here to talk about today, the CIF workflow on the Biophase 8800, right here to my left. Now the Biophase CIF kit is designed to separate and detect proteins and their charge variants. And the separation is primarily driven by amphalites, right, which create a, a pH gradient within our capillary once our voltage is applied. Now we leverage this pH gradient to separate our analyte into distinct um, acidic, basic, and, and really main peak groups. Now the, the analyte's variants are gonna migrate within our capillary until they reach their isoelectric point where they're PI neutral and they're no longer moving to either the anode or the cathode. And once we've fully focused our analyte, we then remobilize it past the detector and we can view the resulting uh, electrophorogram within the biophase software. Now in the biophase CIEF kit, you have almost all the required reagents to run the assay. Really, you just need to add the analyte that you're, you're analyzing, the desired amphalite you wanna to use to separate it, and the PI markers that best fit your separation, and you're ready to go. So we know that CIEF is a, a platform capable technique that can separate our proteins and their charge variants. And the biophase CIF kit, as I mentioned, includes just about everything that you need to perform this separation. So let's take a look. What we've got are two, two different boxes. And what's nice is that these are color coded. So here, this, this orange box that I have is set for uh, ambient storage. So the colors denote how we're gonna store our reagents here. So here we have our, our CE grade water. We have our anodic stabilizer and our urea. Now in our other box, this now is our green storage condition. This is just stored refrigerated. So very nice, very, uh, very colorful. We've got all of the other reagents already essentially made for us. So here we have our cathodic stabilizer, our chemical mobilizer, our analyte here in red, our catholite here in blue, our formamide here, CIF gel, and our neutral conditioning solution. So everything, just about everything that we need to run the assay, all the real true reagents that we need. And so we just add our PI markers, add our analyte, add our amphalite, we're ready to go. Now, for those of you that have used uh, the PA100 plus uh, CIEF, we, we are fairly familiar with this workflow, right? Uh, but now we're providing you all those reagents to, to run your sample analysis. And the kit itself can process, we say about four half plates, so roughly about 200 samples. And we say that because you're not always gonna be running a full plate. So if you don't have a full set of samples, you know, you're not wasting all those reagents to just run half of your plate here. We can see everything is 96 well plate based. So our sample plate, 96 well plate based. Our reagent plate is also 96 well plate based. And this has eight separate wells per capillary to ensure that we have an independent rinse of each capillary. Let's take a quick look at that capillary on the biophase. Pull that up here. You can see we have eight individual capillaries here on the inlet side. Each one has its own electrode sort of wrapped around the capillary. And those are gonna go through this housing, past this detection window, and down here on the outlet side where they're all bundled together. Also on the outlet side, they have one independent electrode. Now, if we flip this over, 
we can see we have two coolant ports, so we still have the same recirculating liquid coolant that we're used to on the P800 plus. But one of the differences here that I'll note is the pressure ports are now applied on the side. So this capillary actually interfaces on the side rather than underneath, which eliminates a lot of the, the cleanup that we had to do on the P800 plus in between, um, in between analyses. We don't have to clean that interface block. It's now interfaced on the side. We also have an RFID chip that tracks the amount of runs, the first use, um, the serial number, and the type of capillary that we have. So if we put in the wrong capillary for our analysis, we're not going to be able to start our run. We're not going to make that mistake and have a failed run due to that. Now, just as with the PN Plus, there's no upper limit to the amount of injections that you can run. So you know, you're not limited to 100 injections, as you might be on some other systems. So this is a look at the BioPhase software. It has a number of, of different tiles here. And where, where we start um, in our workflow is, is very um, well, sort of sequential, but it will certainly make sense. And we start with our reagent editor. So if we click that, well, I already have the CIF reagents opened up, it looks like. So that, that's nice. Uh, what we're going to basically do is we're going to add all the reagents that we ever want to use on either the inlet side of our capillary or the outlet side of the capillary. So these are now dynamic, right? On the PN or Plus, we're really designating a location for those reagents to go. But on biophase, what we've done is we've made this more dynamic. We just say list whatever it is you want to use, and later on, we can choose where it's going to go. And we'll definitely highlight that when we get there in the sequence. So in our inlet reagents, we're going to have a number of different water rinses. We're going to have a few water dips. Uh, analyte dip, our analyte, our neutral conditioning solution, or formamide to really rinse everything out. Maybe another water dip. You also notice this middle column is viscosity. So what's really, again, really cool, really innovative in biophase software is it's going to be able to calculate the amount of volume used in any of our rinses based on the applied pressure and the duration. And it will know when you need or will run out of that reagent. So if you have a number of rinses of one reagent and you're going to expend all of that liquid, the biophase software will prompt you to fill reagent in another um, column. Now on the outlet side of our capillary, we obviously want waste. We'll also have a water dip and our catholite and chemical mobilizer. And you'll notice in this color, as I, I mentioned, I, I went back to on our reagent, um, reagent boxes there, these colors designated in our, our preloaded methods here match the colors of those caps. So our analyte had that red cap has this nice red color, our cathlite had that blue cap has this nice blue color, and our chemical mobilizer has green. So everything is very visually distinguishable. Very nice to use. We certainly got a lot of positive feedback on there, and I, I personally really like it. Very intuitive. So once we've loaded our reagents or defined our reagents, we're going to go to our method editor. And we'll start over here in our method setting. So for us, you know, P100 plus users and 32 karat users will be, or you know, maybe Empower users on P100 plus, I've certainly used that for majority of my career as well. Um, we're used to sort of this screen where, where we set our capillary cartridge temperature, our sample storage temperature, uh, the detector type, and some of the other data collection settings. Now, some of the things that are new and unique are we can set the capillary type. And as I mentioned, the software is going to know through that RFID chip if you've loaded the wrong capillary, which I've done one time, uh, and I wasn't able to start my sequence, which was great because my results wouldn't have looked very good. Um, so it is sort of a fail-safe there um, in the software. Um, you can also see the, the loaded reagents here from our, our reagent set that we had made. And if we go to our method program, you can see all of our actions here are also color coded. And this is just a drag and drop system. So we want to add a rinse here. We just drag it down. Then we choose from our reagent types what we want to do. So maybe we want to just start with the water rinse going into waste. So again, it's not going from one static location to another, but this is fully dynamic. So here you just choose your duration, say pressure, or if we didn't want it, we can just go ahead and drag that to the trash can. So we have a water rinse injection, weights for our water dips, our separation and our uh, remobilization step. And then afterwards, we have a few different rinse steps to remove all of the 
uh, sample from our capillary prior to the next injection. And once we have that method saved, the next thing that we really want to do is create our sequence. We're just going to start with a brand new sequence here. So we're going to go over to our project folder that we have everything saved in. And we'll see two different types of methods here. So in TO, we have our conditioning and our shutdown methods. And the instrument knows this because we don't have sample injection. Uh, and here in the darker blue, we have our separations. And those are, again, denoted because we have a sample injection. To load them onto our plate, all we do is drag and drop. So we take it, we drag it down. Now we can see that our whole 96 volt plate is highlighted um, or really bordered in yellow. Because the conditioning method isn't affecting any one column, it's affecting the whole plate. So there's, that's why it's done that way. Now we want to define maybe a few different rows of samples and drag our separation method down here. And we can see it populate over here on the right-hand side. Now, let's say we're, we're doing a, a really quick method optimization. And this is something really unique to biophase and something that I like doing myself. In our first column, you know, we, we start with an unknown sample, one of those uh, bi-specifics or um, new constructs that, that people are really looking at. One of the first things we're going to want to do, and we don't always do, because let's be honest, we don't always have a lot of time in the lab. We've got a lot of other priorities. But what we should always do is really fully optimize that method early on. So we're going to, the first thing we're going to do is look at our, our urea concentrations. So we have eight wells here. We can do eight different urea concentrations. And on our next one, maybe, whoops, I didn't want to delete the whole column. What I want to do is delete a couple wells. So once we've figured out our optimal urea concentration, say it's, I don't know, six molar, uh, next thing we're going to want to do is look at, take a look at those amphilites, right? Now, we don't necessarily have eight amphilite conditions, so we can remove these wells, and we won't be collecting data from them. So although the instrument will still be electrophoresing uh, across all eight, it won't be collecting data on the ones where we don't have any sample. And then on the third one, once we have figured out our optimal urea concentration and use that to find out our optimal ampholite conditions, then we can run repeatability. And maybe we want to inject that a few times. So certainly across all eight capillaries will give us a nice look there. But if we want to do replicate injections of that, all we have to do is drag the separation down. And now we can see we have replicate one, two, and three. And that's just not three replicates. It's actually 24 replicates. So here, within you know a few hours, you're getting a fully optimized method and a really nice look at the reproducibility of uh, not just the instrument, but of your method. So you know if you're in a robust space. Now the last thing we're going to do is add our shutdown method, and again, this is going to highlight the whole cap. Uh, sorry, the whole 96 volt plate because there's no sample injection. But we can click over here, error recovery, and what that's going to do is if the instrument runs into any error it's going to try and run the shutdown method. So it's not just going to hang up in the middle of a run, uh, but it will try to run this method so that your capillary is stored safely. Now, our last tab here is the plate layout. So it shows us our 96 volt plate, the, the wells that are going to be injected and, and where data is going to be collected from. It also shows us our outlet plates. And over here, it shows us our reagent plate. And as I've, I've said a couple of times, these uh, reagents are dynamic, so I can take this and I can drag it over, which I, I just love. I love this feature in Biophase. It's so nice because you can put your reagents wherever you want to, wherever makes sense. So what I do is I put all my waters in front. So when I'm you know, using my multi-channel pipette, I just go boom, 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 boom. And then, you know, for the analyte, boom, boom, boom. Um, and then the other ones, the neutral conditioning solution and, and our formamide. Um, I also like to keep my outlet plate, uh, all these, these reagents next to each other. So it's just easier to, to distinguish when I'm, when I'm pipetting. Now, what I personally do, you, know, you, can, you can print this page on if you want to. I usually just take a picture of it, take it into the lab, and uh, fill my reagents and, and prep my samples. So this is just a very nice feature. Now, once we save this method, then it's going to be transferred over to the biophase front panel uh, for us to run.
All right, so here we are, our front panel. Uh, this is really nice. It's a, it's a touch screen interface with, again, a lot of these different um, icons here. So the first one that we have is our direct control icon. And for users of 32 karat or Empower Control in their P Engine Plus, they're going to be familiar with a lot of this stuff. We have a lot of different icons here to manually set our cartridge or sample storage temperature. Uh, we can do manual rinses, manual injections, manual separations. When our system is running, um, down here, it's going to display exactly what's going on. All right, so our system status, what is it doing? Is it, is it rinsing? Is it separating? How long has that action progressed for? One minute out of, say, three minutes. Uh, what method we're running? What is our sample storage temperature? What is our cartridge temperature? What is the applied pressure currently? What is the applied voltage? What is the generated current? What, what detector, uh, so the UV or the laser, are we using? And how does our coolant level look? Now over here on the right side, we can see uh, a few more icons. Here we have eject sample, eject reagent. And if we click on that, we can see exactly where our reagents go. There you go. You can see that in the little picture in a picture that, that popped up. So this tray, or the tray cover, I should say, opens up our 96 well plates or our 96 well reagent plate, sorry, sample plate or reagent plate comes out. And then right behind it is our outlet plate that we saw in the software. So let's just go in right there and we can choose to either the reagent plate or the sample plate. And then once we have them in there, we just click load. And then we see that the tray closed up. Now beyond that, we have wavelength settings. We also have this cartridge info button that ties back into our RFID chip. So if we click on here, we can see you know, the serial number, the lot number, the capillary type, number of runs, et cetera. We can go back. Up here, we have a button to load or eject the cartridge. And you can see that right here. This front panel actually just slides right over. Our cartridge sits right here. We just pull it out when we uh, eject it or slide it right back in there. Our coolant port is right here for those of us that are familiar with the P Enter Plus. And once we have our cartridge in there, we just slide this back over. What's really nice is to turn the lamp or laser on and off, you just click a button. Also really nice is that within the software, once we start our sequence, if we fail to turn our lamp on or our laser on, it's smart enough to turn it on for us. So I will inevitably say that, yes, I have forgotten to do that on BioPhase software. I've also forgotten to do it on the P Enter Plus. Um, and typically, on that instrument at least, I will program the method to turn it on for me. But in biophase, it's now done that for you. So here in our project folder there is where we're going to be loading that sequence that we had saved. So we just select the one that we want. It gets loaded over here. Um, so here we see we're doing a conditioning method, a separation method, and a shutdown method. And that plus sign shows us our, it is our error recovery method. If we tap there on the method screen, we can sort of see the um, method that is going to be run. So it sort of expands that for us, gives us a zoomed in view. We can also zoom in here, zoom in on our reagents. And down here, it'll show you exactly what reagent was in there, what we have uh, programmed. Now, I like to just do a quick double check to make sure that I did pipette everything into those locations before I start my run. And then we can just run sequence. And there we go. Now, we'll go back to our home panel. So that was the run sequence tab there. If we go to the capillary view tab, we can see all eight capillaries and what's going on. So right now they are tiled. We can go to overlay. We get all eight capillary windows in one overlay. We're currently in the detector view. We can also switch to the current, the generated current, or the mix view. Yeah, we can tile that up if we want to, where we can look at capillary A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. If we so choose, we can go back there. And that is a nice look at our front panel. And so you're going to run your, your sample. You're going to run your plate. You're going to have a lot of data to analyze. And one of the things where you might start is with what we call the optimizer down here. So we go ahead and enable this. And what the optimizer is going to do is it's going to try and figure out where a true baseline is based on this minimum signal to noise ratio of 10, 
a noise interval and also these other parameters that I don't personally change much. Our minimum signal noise ratio of 10 is our, our limit of quantitation. So we go ahead and click OK there. And then we can click this little play button that's analyzed. So this is down the software um, applying some of these parameters from our optimizer uh, to our data. Now, we certainly don't want to uh, integrate sort of our, our pre-peaks here. So what we're going to do is suspend our integration, say 0 to 15 minutes. And you know, there's some other other things we can we can choose to change as well. You know, you can change your your peak width, you can change your positive threshold, and positive threshold is a new unique uh, feature to Biophase software. If we zoom in here, we can see exactly what's going on. So this gray line is what it calls the positive threshold. And it's basically a minimum peak height uh, that that a peak needs to reach for it to be integrated. Now, what I really like some of the changes in the Biophase software is how easy it is to add these markers to our, our library. So if we right click on any of these peaks, we can add as a marker. And say this is our, our PI 10 marker, our calibrated migration time is 10 because that's its PI. And the tolerance can either be in percentages or absolute times. So we'll go ahead and do that. In this one, we can add marker our PI nine and a half marker, calibrated migration time of nine and a half. That has marker, PI five and a half, migration time of five and a half. And the last one, PI 4.1, 4.1 here. Now we can see over here in our library tab, that's all been there for us. And we have a button here that can switch between raw migration time and calibrated migration time. So here now we can see, I want to add an annotation. Now, we can annotate exactly what the, uh, the the calculated PI is, but we can see for this molecule, we're right at about 7.7, .7, just right under 7.7 .7 for our main peak. So a fairly neutral, slightly basic molecule here. Um, now, some of you might be thinking, you know what, I don't, I don't really want to do this for every time. If I have a processing method, I want to open it up, and I assure you that is possible. So we can go ahead, navigate to a previously made uh, processing method file, go ahead and process that, and we can see some of the changes here. So our, our peaks here in green, these are our markers, our peaks here in blue, these are named peaks. And there are markers there. You can also see that we, we can adjust our positive threshold at different times in the electric diagram. And we can apply this processing method to all of our samples. So if we right click, we can apply and analyze to the check. And we're going to see it move through each sample. Oops. Basically, what's going through is for each sample, it is defining the markers here within that tolerance level. It's taken our uh, raw integration. So we have a lot of different peaks. But in our post analysis here, what we can see is that we have merged peaks. So we don't you know, always typically report individual variants. A lot of times we're reporting to our, our formulators, our, our colleagues in process development um, is our total groups, right? Our total basic variants, total acidic variants. How do those change on stability? How do those change with process changes? And we could wait for this to go through all the samples, but it's quite a few, so we can just stop it here. I'm going to give the software a second. And what's really cool, I like this feature in Biophase, is how easy it is to really select um, all of your, your samples or a subset. So here, we're going to select the ones that we finished processing. So if we go ahead and overlay them and switch back to our migration, and we can see for, for quite a few samples here, what do we probably have? Maybe 15 samples, give or take. So here's our raw uh, electrophorogram for those samples. And we can switch 
between our raw migration time and our calibrated migration time. We'll take a look at that and see some of the reproducibility that this affords you. Very, very reproducible data here. Now you can even scroll down here and get some idea of um, some different calculations that can be done within biophase software. So for the, the basic uh, total basic variant groups, you know, it can give you the average, gives you RSD about less than even a half, which is very nice. Center deviation, even a min to max range for that peak. You can scroll down, you see the main peak, or you have an RSD again <laughs> below 0.5. So very, very reproducible on this, this molecule. Now, you know, one of the things I mentioned earlier is how can we leverage biophase to um, speed up our method development? We went over how do you how could you screen you know, different conditions really quickly. So here on this on this analysis tab, we're looking at a molecule called Ilea. This is a, a, a bispecific molecule uh, from Generon. And we can look at just that, right? We look at our eight different urea conditions. And within less than an hour, you get some really nice results. So you can actually see that for this molecule, Maybe you don't need urea, or right? maybe urea is always in your template method. And for some molecules, it's gonna look really good. For some, it could probably be optimized, but you don't know that because you didn't take the time because you didn't have the time to screen them all. So from here, within one, really one injection across the eight capillaries, you screen eight different conditions. So then you take your condition that you like the most, and now you screen different ampelite conditions. Right, and each ampholite gives us different resolving power. Each ampholite gives us really a different background noise too. So, you know, extra points for those in the audience that can tell which ampholites I'm using for these ones that have a little more background noise. Um, but here again, you know, we, we screen a number of different ampholite conditions. We know now where our PI is. Our PI is just a slightly basic, about 7.7 .7 for our main peak. So we're zooming in on that range. Right, we can still, we can mix our wide range and our narrow range ampholites. We can use just narrow range amplites. And for some of them where we really don't get those high PI markers resolving, that's exactly the reason why is we chose to use really a narrow range amplite that really didn't encompass the PI range of those markers. So those aren't necessarily the markers that we'd move forward with at the end anyway. Now, once we've chosen our optimal urea and amplite uh, conditions, now we're gonna go ahead and run some repeatability across our capillaries. So here you can see, right, within a couple hours, within not even half of your day, maybe half of your day with preparing the samples, setting up the run. Within half of your day, you, you started with this molecule that you knew basically nothing about. You've optimized your charge variant method. There's no way you can do this with ion exchange. It's impossible. There are too many gradients. There are too many columns. There are too many conditions. But with the biophase, or with really with CIEF leveraging biophase and the eight capillaries on biophase, you can do very robust, very quick method development on your newer constructs that you have limited information about. 